weird fishes. Well, it is 420 somewhere and today we talk about abortion. That's right, we are gonna dive headfirst into this entire discussion about Roe v. Wade and uh, try and make sense of it, at least from our small little context of uh, marijuana and drugs as a whole. So, Samuel Alito has uh, created a draft majority decision that uh, is assuming that the majority of the court is voting in favor of abolishing Roe v. Wade or taking that out of the equation. Um, his draft uh, decision was leaked and that is maybe one of the first times it's ever happened so it's big big news on both sides of, of the uh, parties and for the most part the conversation has kind of just stopped there the decision has been that uh, Roe v Wade should be taken down and uh, there are a lot of people protesting on one side and the other side they're saying how was this leaked in the first place this is clearly some um, political motivation beyond behind the leak uh, but the actual decision, what's, what he's actually saying in the paper is very, very fascinating. And I think that's, and that's kind of where we're gonna, we're gonna jump in. Um, as far as what you believe on, on abortion being right or wrong, uh, I'll leave that to you to, to figure out. But Samuel Alito, what he kind of says in the actual paper is, it's all about autonomy. It's all about, it's all about individual auto autonomy, what you can do with your own body, what you have the right to do with your own body. In Alito's point of view, and in most of the judges' point of view, is that the decision went too far, that, that Roe v. Wade went too far with saying what, what an individual's right for autonomy is. For instance, he says, these attempts to justify abortion through appeals to a broader right to autonomy and to define one's concept of existence prove too much. So in, in this small part of the, act, of the entire decision that he's uh, written out, he is talking about the repercussions of what it would mean to take the, the use of autonomy autonomy in uh, Roe v. Wade and put it in other contexts. And one of the contexts he uses is drug decriminalization. He says exactly, those criteria at a high level of generality could license fundamental rights to elicit drug use, prostitution, and the like. So the first thing that comes at least to my mind when uh, I see drugs come up in something that's a hot, hot, hotly debated thing is like, oh God, here it comes again. More Republicans going after the idea of drugs and, and trying to criminalize more. Um, um, what he's basically saying is that you can use this to create cases for drug decriminalization. And that's fascinating for, for a lot of reasons because yes, you actually could use the idea of um, autonomy for drug decriminalization. You could say that you have the right to use drugs in your own home and uh, that's not affecting anybody, so that's your own right. This has actually been used in, um, in court in the past. However, it's only really been successful in a medical purpose. In a non-medical purpose, the idea of using drugs in your own home is um, it's kind of a non-starter. It hasn't, it hasn't gotten anywhere. However, a medical purpose has gotten somewhere. So it's not entirely out of the blue for Alito to use this as an example of what could happen after um, Roe v. Wade. But the, the difference here is that Roe v. Wade has been enacted for decades now and we haven't seen this pop up. So the idea of being afraid of Roe v. Wade's repercussions is a little silly on that side. There's then um, a lot of people on the other side which is the, the Democrat side, which now is worried of the repercussions of, of this decision because there are other things like gay marriage or there are things like um, the right to have same-sex relations. Any of that is kind of hinging on the same thing as Roe v. Wade. So on both sides, they're worried about repercussions of what autonomy means. And I find this so fascinating because this is really the heart of what government is. Like we have to somehow delineate what is uh, an individual's right for autonomy, right? Like that's... That's such a huge part of what the government does because government is is kind of the antithesis of anything individual. It is it is a collective and it is stripping you of individual autonomies to an extent. And we have to figure out what that extent is. Um, when it comes to drug decriminalization, if it did ever come to the Supreme Court, which I don't think it would anytime soon, but if, if this decision ever came to the Supreme Court, this would be what it would hinge upon is whether or not people have the right to use 
any drugs whatsoever in their own home because it's their individual autonomy to do so. It's kind of the, the basis of the entire question. So I think this is, this is a huge thing and we should really be focusing on this part of the Roe v. Wade debate as opposed to just kind of a, a surface level, he's taking away Roe v. Wade or, 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 or in celebration of that. But yeah, that's kind of where we are with everything. Um, it's fascinating to look at it from a drug perspective. And I find it a little bit ironic that Republicans are the ones trying to strip away the idea of individual autonomy, even though they're kind of, that's, that's the basis of their entire party, but uh, we'll leave that for another day. And that's the breakdown today. Uh, it's, it's New Music Friday, so we have a brand new Arcade Fire album called We Out. And uh, this one has been super, super anticipated. They have, oh my God, I don't even know where to start with them. Um, their last album, Everything Now, was a, just bad. It was just bad from beginning to end. There was maybe one good song on that whole thing, but it was basically taking the same idea that they're taking in We, but making it a, a satire of, of uh, us being online all the time. As opposed to now, they're just moralizing against it. And this album um, works. I think it's good. I uh, My second listen was a lot better than my first listen. There are some standout tracks. It's also really, really kind of cringy in points. Like there's, um, there's a long stretch of one song where, where um, Wynn Butler is saying, I unsubscribe. And I find that super annoying because you're using the, the terminology of something that you're trying to get out of. So then you're no longer getting out of it because you're stuck inside that terminology. I'm getting a phone call one second. So um, yeah, I've got an adapter for an EF mount. Okay, so yeah, the album is worth listening to. It's slightly hokey in points. It's slightly boring in points. There are some songs that are great though, and I think it might be a grower. So that's uh, Arcade Fire, it's new album, We. And that's the show for this week. We'll be back next week with some more stories. I'll see you then. <coughs>